Hello friend, welcome back to my channel on lecture of atomic absorption spectroscopy. We have learned in the previous lecture the flame emission spectroscopy. Today we will continue with the same type that is atomic absorption spectroscopy. The learning outcomes. The learner will be able to explain principle of atomic absorption spectroscopy, discuss the instrumentation and component of atomic absorption spectrophotometer, relate the interference produced in atomic absorption and describe application of atomic absorption spectroscopy. Class of spectroscope spectroscopic method in which the spaces are examined in spectrophotometers are in the form of atom okay so either they are we are using the molecules or ions in some cases so they are called as a spectrophotometry or spectrofluorometry molecular spectroscopy or molecular spectrofluorometry here we are using the atoms there are three important methods based on the spectroscopy of atoms that includes flame emission photometry okay so that also known as a atomic emission photometry that we have studied in the last lecture today we are going to study this atomic absorption spectroscopy aas then inductively coupled plasma atomic emission spectroscopy icpa is es that is a modified form of your absorb atomic absorption spectroscopy so what is the atomic absorption spectrophotometry? So we know that in the flame photometry, it has the limitations in determining limited number of elements like sodium, potassium, calcium, etc. Because we are using the coal gas or cooking gas whose temperature is not more than 107, uh, 1700 degrees centigrade. So in atomic absorption spectroscopy is a very common technique for detecting metals and metalloids in the sample it is very reliable and simple to use like flame photometer more simpler than flame photometer it can analyze over 68 elements it also measures the concentration of metals in the samples uh, in discovery uh, we have studied that the first atomic absorption spectrophotometer was built by CSIRO scientist Alan Walshen in 1954. This was this is the first instrument he has developed for detection of various metalloids or metal ions. We can see the various elements that can be detected by using uh, atomic absorption spectrophotometer. So the elements which are shown in the pink color can be detected by using your atomic absorption spectrophotometer provided that you will use the different combinations of fuel gas for producing the different temperature of the filament. Some modifications also required in the instrumentation. The technique used basically the principle that free atom in gases form generated in an atomizer can absorb the radiation at a specific frequency. So here we are just producing the atoms um, by using the flame or non-flame technique and these unexcited atoms are bombarded with the external source of the electromagnetic radiation. Atomic absorption spectroscopy quantifies the absorption of ground state atom in the gaseous state. The atom absorbs ultraviolet or visible light and make transitions to higher electronic energy levels that occurs in UV visible same. So resonance will also take place here. Uh, the atoms in the ground state will absorb the uh, radiation energies. They will go to the excited state. They will not remain long time in excited state. They will try to emit the excess energy in terms of radiation and intensity of this re-emitted radiation is measured in case of the atomic emission spectroscopy here only the absorption is measured in atomic absorption spectroscopy how much radiation has been absorbed 
Analyte concentration is determined from amount of absorption. Similarly, it can be used for qualitative analysis and quantitative analysis. Concentration measurements are usually determined from working curve after calibrating the instrument with standards of known concentration as we have seen with the flame photometer also. What is the basic principle of the instrumentation? An atomic absorption spectrophotometer is an instrument that uses the principle to analyze the concentration of metal in the solution. The substance in the solutions are suctioned into an excited phase where they undergo vaporizations and are broken down into the small fragmented atoms by discharge, flame or plasma. Any technique we can use, electronic discharge technique is there, flame technique is there or plasma technique is there. By exposing these atoms to such temperature, they are able to jump to the higher energy levels and return the emitted light, which is happening in the flame emission spectroscopy. But here we are not exciting, thermally exciting the atoms, but we are bombarding the atoms with the electromagnetic radiations. So the instrumentation, an atomic absorption spectrophotometer consists of the light source, in the flame photometer, there is no light source, flame itself acts as a source. A sample compartment where the flame or we can have the non-flame techniques for, as a sample compartment, a detector system. The source of light is a lamp whose cathode is composed of the element being measured. Each element requires a different lamp. Depending upon what element we are using, different lamps are available. So this is the block diagram or schematic representation for atomic absorption spectrophotometer. See the components of atomic absorption spectrophotometer. This is the source where the radiations are emitted. This is the mirror which will uh, chop the radiations in two parts. One will continuously pass through your flame. One directly reaches to the um, detector. The sample is hold in this flame as a small atoms after nebulization then these atoms are bombarded with the radiations which absorb here the transmitted radiations are then sent to the monochromators prisms or grating monochromators are used and then they are sent to the detector same is there this is the source source generally uses the halo cathode lamp scl so this halo cathode lamp is used as a source okay so either we can have the flame or the plasma or the non-flame technique for preparing the atomic form of the substance which are bombarded with these radiations the absorption is measured uh, by observing the intensity of transmitted beam and that intensity of transmitted beam is filtered first by the monochromators then detected amplified and read out so we'll see one by one all components used in a atomic absorption spectrophotometer. First is your light source. Generally, we know that we are using the halo cathode lamp as a light source. The light source is usually halo cathode lamp of element that is being measured. If you want to measure copper, you have to use the element of copper. If you want to you determine gold, you have to use the element of gold. For each element, a separate lamp you have to use. Lasers are also used in research instruments. Modern instrument uses the laser technique. Since lasers are intense enough to excite uh, items to higher energy level, they allow atomic absorption spectrophotometer and atomic fluorescence measurement in a single instrument. But the disadvantage of this narrow band light source is that only one element is measured at a time. So this is the construction of a halo cathode lamp, SCL. Okay, so the name itself, it has a silica window where the radiations in the UV are emitted back. It has a halo uh, tube, halo cathode, which is made up of the particular element, a anode. It has filled with the inert gas like neon, argon, etc. The cathode is coated with the metals of interest. This is the cathode which is coated with the metal of interest. Inert gas like neon or argon is ionized by electrical current and these ions are then attracted to the cathode. This is known as sputtering. 
sputtering of the ions. One ions get attract, uh, excited with the another atoms of the inert gas. The ion bombarded the cathode and excite the metal ions coated on it. This excitation of the metal produces the emission of electromagnetic radiation with wavelength characteristic of that analyte. You can see the structure or the image for halo cathode lamp. Okay, so here it is a plastic base. A separate window, silica window or quartz windows are allowed so that the radiation can uh, come out to this lamp. So, uh, in some instruments, a mixed um, cathode lamp is also used. Instead of using a single elements, a mixture of elements can be used as a cathode, but it has less uh, intensity of emission as compared to your individual elements. So, generally the individual element lamps are utilized, but mixed lamps are also available. The next, next, at, uh, uh, next part of your instrumentation is an atomizer. Atomizer which will convert the liquid into the small droplet. AS requires that analyte atoms be in the gaseous phase. Ions or atoms in sample must undergo desolvations and vaporization in higher temperature source such as flame or graphite furnace. So this atomizer will convert the uh, liquid into small droplets. These droplets are further heated to convert into the gas phase uh, atoms. So these gas phase atoms can be obtained by the graphite furnace or the flame. Flame atomic absorption can only analyze solution while graphite furnace atomic absorption can accept solution, slurries, or solid sample. The flame atomic absorption uses a slot type burner to increase the path length. See the construction in case of your flame photometry. We have studied that there are two types of burner. One is called as a premix burner. Another one is your total consumption burner. Both has a burner with small holes to emit, uh, produce this flame. Here, a slot is there in the burner. Therefore, it increases the total absorbance. Sample solutions are usually aspired with the gas flow into the nebulizing mixing, mixing chamber as we have seen with the premix burner to form small droplets before entering the flame. See, this is the basic principle. The technique of flame atomic absorption spectroscopy requires liquid sample to be aspired aspired that is aerosolized and mixed with the combustible gases such as acetylene and air or acetylene and nitrous oxide. The mixture is ignited in the flame whose temperature is ranging from 2100 to 2800 degrees centigrade. During combustion, atoms of the element of interest in sample are reduced to three unexcited ground state atoms. See here, they are unexcited ground state atoms, which absorb the light at characteristic wavelength depending upon the element which we are detecting. So the sample is introduced, it is atomized, it is aerosolized, and it will come into the flame. So these atoms which are in the flame are bombarded with the light source. They absorb this radiation, see the intensity, so there is a decrease in the intensity of the transmitted beam as we have studied in the previous lectures also. It uses the nebulization chambers like you are using in your uh, premix burner. See the construction of nebulized chamber. The solution of sample was sprayed as an aerosol through a nebulizer into a flame. So this is the capillary which is kept into the beaker containing the solution. The solutions will come out here through this capillary due to the negative pressure which is developed here due to the flow of your uh, oxidant gas and the combustion uh, fuel gas. The nebulizer functions because the high velocity of the combustion gases of fuel and oxygen rushing past a small orifice here, a small orifice drawing the liquid into the flow as a small droplet. This droplet will come in, uh, are coming here 
in this premix chamber. This is called as a premix chamber where we are mixing this droplet with oxidant gases and the fuel gases. A sample burner, uh, simple burner head and a nebulizer chambers are shown here to limit the size of atomized, uh, atomized samples drop or droplets introduced into the flame to a very small size that is 5 to 10 micrometer millimeters uh, dropper droplets larger than this size are removed okay by using these baffles these are the fans or baffles which are used for mixing as well as these fans will drop out uh, the bigger particles in this uh, chamber and it has provided a waste or vent where the more uh, size droplets are just removed as a solution and the smaller droplets are allowed to enter into this burner system. See this burner is of the slot type. It doesn't have a small holes uh, in the um, burner head. It has a slot so that a bigger path length will be available. So the adjustment of the flame temperature is not critical as you are seen in with the flame photometer because there is a thermal excitation here we want only the conversion of the material into the atomic form so temperature filament should not be more only the vaporization is essential variables that control the size of droplets are differences in the velocity of the gas and liquids so what they are getting sucked out the density of the liquid which we are using the viscosity of the liquid and the volume flow rate of both gas and liquid they will decide the um, droplet size so we are using types of various flames the different flames can be achieved using the different mixture of gases depending upon the desired temperature and burning velocity the software of the instrument is designed in such a way that once you select the um, particular element automatic flame um, parameter adjustments are done by the software some elements can also be converted to the atoms at a higher temperature. Even at high temperature, if excess oxygen is present, some metal forms oxide that do not re-dissociate into the atoms. To avoid this, we can have inert environments also. To inhibit their in, uh, formation, condition of flame may be modified to achieve the reduced non-oxidizing flame. Okay, so uh, some modifications are suggested uh, even for some substances like your arsenic or mercury. Um, borohydrate generators are provided where the um, uh, vapors are converted into the borohydrate derivatives. This is, these are the various uh, fuel gas and combustion gas and oxidant gas combinations. You can see here air coal mixtures. This is the speed of the flame and the maximum temperature which you can get with the air coal gas that is your cooking gas you will get the maximum temperature of 1840 degrees centigrade where we can go for generally oxygen nitrogen acetylene gas where we can get the 640 as a uh, flame speed and a temperature of 2815 oxyacetylene uh, flames are also required for certain elements which is having the temperature of 3060 uh, degree centigrade. Then nitrous oxide acetylene flames are there. The highest temperature you can get with the cyanogen, but we know that the cyanogen is very toxic. It cannot be handled in the laboratory. The oxygen cyanogen um, admixtures gives the temperature of 4640 degree centigrade. But again, this um, handling of this cyanogen gas is difficult. So this is the combinations of various uh, fuel gases and the oxidant gases. Uh, generally, we are using uh, either oxygen, nitrogen, acetylene or oxygen, acetylene or nitrous oxide, acetylene mixture. So this nitrous oxide, acetylene mixture is also giving a temperature of 3095, that is 3095 degrees centigrade. That is useful for detection of various elements depending upon what element you are selecting the different combinations you have to select atomic absorption methods other than the flame flameless techniques because many times we are having certain disadvantage of flame technique that can be overcome by using certain non-flame techniques 
just for your knowledge i am giving here three non flame technique first is your, is your electrothermal automations this type of automations requires graphite furnace where uh, after thermal pretreatment the sample is rapidly atomized means it is converted to small droplets to maintain a desired fractions of free ground state element in the optical path an inert gas atmosphere is used since the dilution and explosion of effect of flame calls are avoided and the atoms has a longer residence time in optical path a higher peak concentration of the atom is obtained so you will get the more intense peak when you are using the electrothermal atomization technique they are using the graphite furnace in the electrothermal atomization the second one is your carbon rod analyzers this device can be used to convert powdered sample into the atomic vapor a current is applied to a very thin heated carbon rod that contain the solid samples in order to vaporize it a small uh, probe is used carbon probe where we are keeping the small uh, quantity of the solid substance see in the flame uh, atomizations we require that the sample should be in the liquid form solution form here the solids can also be handled directly with the flameless technique the latest technique is your tantalium uh, boat analyzers this is an, another technique that produces an atomic vapor from a solid sample a tantalium boat is electrically heated in a manner similar to the carbon rod system with an inert atmospheric gases here also they are using uh, an environment uh, of inert gases so that the oxidation of samples can be prevented and more accurate determinations can be carried out in the atomic form so these are the three things uh, out of that i will just explain you the graphite furnace the graphite furnace has a several advantages over the flame it is much more efficient atomizer than the flame flame it can directly accept very small absolute quantities of the sample so we don't need to prepare any solutions we don't have to go for the calculations of liquids uh, concentration directly we can take the solid which is aspired into the flame it also provi provides a reducing environment for it easily oxidized element we can change the environment of the flame uh, of the atoms samples are placed directly into the graphite furnace and the furnace is electrically heated in several steps to dry the samples ash organic matters and vapors and the unlike atoms now for your just knowledge i am showing here uh, the modified form of the atomic absorption spectroscopy where we are using the plasma technique plasma discharge techniques so the uh, three types of the higher temperature plasma techniques are available the one is the direct current plasma dcp the microwave induced plasma now the modern techniques are available where we can use the microwaves to produce this plasma and inductively coupled plasma that is listed in the first slide icp it is the most important of these all plasma types the direct current plasma is created by the electronic release of the two electrodes the samples are placed on the electrode these are the two electrodes where the samples so this is the plasma produce so there is a spark produced between these two electrode that is called as a plasma and the sample is placed between this plasma which is then um, this plasma is having the higher temperature and they uh, produce this atomic unexcited atoms uh, in the technique solid samples are placed near the discharge of uh, encourage and emission of the samples by converting the gases atoms so this is the plasmatic uh, plasma uh, techniques now the next component is light separations and detections generally we can use the monochromators and the detectors for uh, separation and detection of the uv visible light the main purpose of monochromator is to isolate the absorption line from the background light due to the interferences here also the interferences is there so we should have a proper um, um, detection system and monochromatic system to avoid the interference of other substances so sample 
detected uh, atomic absorption instruments often replaces the monochromators which we are having uh, instead of flame uh, filters we can have the monochromators with the band pass interference filters the photomultiplier tubes are the most common detectors used in atomic absorption spectrophotometer here we have completed the interference and applications uh, instrumentations of the uh, atomic absorption spectrophotometer now we'll see various applications it can be used for determination of 68 metals only limitations on type of sample is that it must be capable of giving a solution so if you are using the flame techniques then you have to use the solutions metallurgical and inorganic analysis for determinations of alloys like cobalt chromium magnesium manganese lead and zinc it can also be used for analysis of ores like gold cobalt copper iron etc for biochemical analysis of various elements it can be used for detection of the uh, iron level in the blood it is also used in the environmental systems for pollution analysis in the agriculture industries in the wine industries oils and petrochemicals and pharmaceuticals basically you will see the applications in pharmaceutical industry of the atomic absorption spectrophotometer for analysis of calcium in calcium gluconate injections we can use the atomic absorption spectrophotometers for analysis of ors substances for detection of sodium potassium calcium that can be done by using the flame photometer also but more accurate determinations can also be achieved by using the atomic absorption spectrophotometer so all um, new uh, pharmacopias, new editions of pharmacopias, they are uh, suggesting to use the atomic absorption spectrophotometer for detections of potassium, sodium and calcium contents of ORS. It is also used for detection of the zinc in zinc insulin preparation, zinc lante for detection of the zinc content. Many substances are there for the penetration purpose also we are using the zinc and that zinc content determinations is possible only using the atomic absorption spectrophotometer. Analysis of ions in the hematinics, various hematinic preparations are there where we are adding the ions content and that ion content can be detected by using your atomic absorption spectrophotometer. Analysis of cobalt in radio pharmaceuticals, radio pharmaceuticals diagnostic agents we are using cobalt as a, the one of the components where that can be detected by using the atomic absorption spectrophotometer. Analysis of zinc in the dusting powders that can be also done by using the atomic absorption spectrophotometer. So this is an uh, working atomic absorption spectrophotometer of our lab which is showing you the flame. See the flame it is not um, in the single it is a path of higher path length is uh, available and uh, the radiations are passing on the unexcited atoms which are present in this flame. So here we have completed the next topic that is atomic absorption spectrophotometer. Uh, see you in the next topic. Uh, just just wait. Uh, some advantages of atomic absorption are remaining. Advantages of atomic absorption determination of 68 elements then ability to make uh, the PPP determinations part per billion determinations on major components of the samples then precision of measurement by flames are better than 1% RSD. Atomic absorption analysis is subjected to the little interference as compared to your flame photometry because temperature of filament is very critical in flame photometer. Most interference that occurs has been well studied and can be documented with the atomic absorption spectrophotometers like your uh, phosphate determinations there is a interference produced that can be detected by using your or that can be quantified sample preparation is simple as compared to your other things um, often involving only dissolutions in certain acid acid flux methods we are using for preparation of sample and the instrument is easy to tune and operate here we have completed the atomic absorption spectroscopy thank you very much and happy learning. See you in the next lecture. Thank you. Bye-bye.